Hey everybody, I'm Brian with Fort Knox Company and I'm going to show you how to convert a bathtub to a shower and then we're also going to cut out an old shower valve and install a brand new one using PEX A. So what we're going to be doing here is actually moving that drain over because we're going to be doing a new shower here. So we're going to be cutting the concrete right there where I've marked so we can run down. I just confirmed that we have a P-trap under the slab here so I don't have to worry about putting in a new P-trap. But I'm going to basically cut this down here, run a new elbow because we don't need this up for the drain. Run an elbow to here. It's just going to have another turn up. Then we can put in our new drain for the shower. Then the next project will be actually cutting these and putting in a new valve. It's going to be a little bit higher. You can see the work done here. It's pretty bad from the previous uh, probably DIYer or handyman. But... Putting in a new valve, we're going to run PEX, so we're going to go from copper to PEX, new valve, shower head, body spray, and uh, floor drain. So once we get this elbow in here, we'll set it, center it, and uh, get this back filled with the sand, and then maybe a little layer of concrete for support. Let's go ahead and start cutting this, get this out so I have a nice channel to run my bend up. What I'm doing here is just using a hand grinder with about a four and a half inch concrete cutting bit. And I'm just following it along with my shop vac to try to eliminate some of the dust. And I'm scoring along the lines that I marked, making several passes and just kind of letting the tool do the work for me. I ended up needing to upgrade to a seven and a half inch cutting blade just so I can get through this five inch slab. But this definitely got the job done and made quick work of it. So after upgrading to a little bit bigger blade so we can actually get through the slab, I was able to get us all the way back to where we need to. A little bit of metal, the mesh underneath the concrete, I had to cut that. But now I can remove this dirt. We can cut down there. We're gonna do an elbow over, an elbow up. And because we don't know exactly how the shower pan's gonna sit yet, I'm gonna transition from one and a half inch to two. And then two is gonna be rising so that we can then have our uh, shower drain connect to that. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of height and we can plug it, but there is a P-trap there already, so it shouldn't have any gas coming through. But I wanna be able to leave a little bit of height so that they can actually trim it and then set their shower drain fitting and everything the way that they want. And then we'll kind of backfill with some of this dirt, put a little bit of concrete around it if they'd like. Um, but this will all be finished to here and we'll have a riser. And then the next thing will be to cut these out and transition over from copper to PEX and we'll put in the new fittings with the new PEX. Another thing too is that I don't want to cut this pipe below where the top of the P-trap is coming out because if I were to cut this, if for whatever reason set my runner lower than that, we would have water that would sit here and the P-trap, which again, the P-trap would still work, but you would have some water that would sit here. So I wanna make sure that this thing drains down and goes down into the P-trap and goes out. So I'm gonna cut this thing just below the knuckle here, and then we'll clean up this pipe. And that way my elbow comes up. Okay, let's see. As you can see, this elbow has a little bit of, of a rise. So we're gonna have it set here so we can run below our level of the concrete and then come up. See, we got water in the P-trap. So that means the P-trap is working. Now our elbow can go on like that. We're gonna run right down this way. We'll come up for our shower. And so what we're doing here is we're cutting the PVC to fit. I've already glued this elbow on, but I want it to be able to go here and then come up. We're gonna be 16 inches on center, so it is gonna come off to the side a little bit. But I wanna make sure that I have this transition set so that when my elbow comes up, I can set this right there, that when this elbow comes up, 
it'll come up in the right spot. Then I'm going to be transitioning this from inch and a half to two inch. When you're doing your cutting on your pipes, you'll see that there's these little burrs right there. I usually keep a piece of sandpaper nearby so we can hit that, make sure it's smooth inside and out. Um, not only is it going to help with the bond of the glue, which we're using just some like low VOC PVC plumbing glue. Um, but when you put it on there, you don't want this to catch and make the seal um, affected. But on the inside, you don't want it to be rough because this is what all that grime and stuff and hair and things get caught on in the future. As water's going through, you want a smooth surface on the inside of all these transitions to eliminate any place that stuff could get stuck on. So it is important to make it smooth, not just for the connection, but also for the water flow so that it doesn't gunk up. And so just like that, we are smooth. We're ready to put the connection on, put the elbow. I'm probably going to set this first to the location that I want. Then I'll put my elbow on with a riser so I know exactly which way to fit this so it's going straight up. So now we have this all set. We can go ahead and put our elbow in. We'll be able to set this level and straight. Then we can backfill underneath the pipe and support it. And we'll put a little bit of concrete here just to kind of cover it and uh, give it a little bit of rigidity or support. But again, we don't want to pour it super thick, but we're going to have something solid so that when they do their shower pan, they have a good surface to sit on. Now we're all set. We have our P-trap, we have our run, we have a down slope. We have this flush with the ground. We're gonna have some type of thickness of a shower pan. Then we can put our shower drain on top of that. Since it goes to a two or three inch, we transition up to two. A lot of plumbing in houses, depending on what year it was made, one and a half was okay. A lot of houses now will run two if you can. I just redid a whole casita or I'm building it from scratch actually. And I ran everything four inch, three inch or two inch. Even my vent pipes and everything is two inch minimum. Just gives you better water flow, better ventilation. So a lot of the fittings now go to two inch. So you have to transition sometimes one and a half to two. Totally fine, one and a half works great. Two inch is just kind of a plus and kind of like the new standard. We got this set 16 inches on center on a 32 inch shower. This will be able to be backfilled and then we're ready for the plumber or whoever's gonna finish it, the uh, tile guy to come in and do his shower pan. He can set it over that and then he can place the shower drain at whatever level he needs. So I gave him a few inches to work with. So we're just mixing some ready mix concrete. Gonna make it to a smooth consistency. Just did this in a five gallon bucket real quick. So what I did is I backfilled here with a lot of the clean dirt. I didn't wanna put any of this in there. So I filled with the clean dirt. Got about two and a half, three inches. I filled up dirt all the way around here because I still want to be able to dig a little bit around if we ever have to reset this for the plumber or for the tile. So I'm going to backfill all the way to about here, kind of float it level, and that will give our tile guy something to work with um, and a solid surface to set. Obviously when you're standing on there, we want support for that shower pan, or if he's going to do like a pour pan, I want to give him something solid to stand on. So we'll backfill that with some of this and we'll float it level. So now that we're ready to get the shower valve ready and installed, I want to prepare the shower valve before we put it in just to save some time. I have these PEX A fittings. This is PEX A, which is expansion. So the PEX A expansion 
Pex B is more of a crimp. And what that means is you have these barbs right here. You can see it has like a single kind of barb in the middle. These are Pex A and they almost always notate expansion. The Pex B is very commonly found on the shelves. What I found out for you guys is Pex A is being more commonly carried at Lowe's right now, but they don't even have a place on the shelf for them yet. So if you search online, it'll say that they have them in stock, but these are all up in shelves. I have all the fittings for all these connections and the 90 degree turns. They were all up in the boxes still. So I knew that they had the inventory and I just had to find them up at the top and have them get them down. But Pex B is what you're normally seeing and that has four different barbs. And for example, this is a one inch PEX. It goes over after you have an expansion head from our Milwaukee expander tool. This actually goes inside and expands the tube and the compression ring or the, uh, the, the expansion ring. So it expands it and then you slip it over. And as it tries to find its original shape, it squeezes down over the fitting. So this is PEX A and PEX B would be similar, but like I said, the four barbs, except when you put it over, you have a metal sleeve and then you actually have a clamp that crimps or squeezes and applies pressure around the outside with a metal ring and that is crimped and done. One of the benefits of PEX A is that this is, has a memory and it's forever trying to find its original shape. So it's always actually trying to squeeze down, constantly applying pressure. PEX B, I've been told by some plumbers, the reason they prefer A over B just happens to be that A, like I said, is always trying to find its shape. And so it's always applying a pressure. Once you've clamped the PEX B, um, there's, it's not going to continue to keep squeezing. So for some reason it comes loose or whatever, it's not going to prevent that from happening. It's, it's crimped and it's done. So I have a lot of PEX A stuff and I have this tool on hand, um, but we're going to go ahead and get these male threads into these half inch fittings. We're going to be using some plumber's tape. We're going to wrap it in a clockwise or basically in a motion that as I go to turn it and tighten it in, it'll go with the way that the tape is wrapped so that as I tighten it, it doesn't actually pull the tape off. So if you're looking at it this way, it's going to be actually like a uh, counterclockwise motion so that when I end the tape and I go to tighten this right, it's going to actually go with the tape and not pull it. If you're looking at it this way, it's going to be a clockwise motion. So either way, we're going to put some tape on this because you can see the fittings because it's metal on metal or brass on brass. It threads in really easy. Um, towards the end, it gets a little bit tight, but we want to make sure that we get at least four to six wraps of Teflon tape on this. So I usually do four, six, eight wraps, depending on what it is. And then we'll tighten this down with our wrench. We'll get all four of the fittings in. And so that way, when I go to place this in the wall, I can figure out how I'm going to mount it, how deep we're going to mount it based off these measurements that the instructions say. We're going to have this pretty much flush with the finished surface or the probably the tile board. And then that will allow the housing or the finish to go over it properly. But our main thing is getting these valves in so that when we place it, we can just start cutting and running our lines and we'll use our tool to quickly make all those connections. So we're going to get these in now and then we can take it to the place it's going to be mounted. So now we're going to go on to cutting these cup pipes and then transitioning over to that PEX material. And all I'm using here is a tubing cutting tool. It's a multi-use tool, not too expensive, and you can find them at all your big box stores. I'll probably put some links for these tools that I'm using here in the description. But just make sure you have a bucket nearby because even though the water is shut off, you will still have some water in those lines. So you got to always prepare to have some of that fallout. And I'm also cutting these pipes off center because I'm trying to take into consideration the size of the transitions that I'm going to be using. And I do not want to stack them right on top of each other. So I want to give myself a little stagger. Then we're going to go ahead and mount the new valve, making sure everything is plumb and level. 
and I used some spacing techniques here to make sure that it was appropriately aligned with the finished wall surface and that we had our easy runs to all of our water lines that we will start making now. While using the PEX material, they make these different measuring tools to make sure you have the proper insertion depth on these transitions. I'm gonna be using some of these shark bite transitions and then I'll be using the PEX A tool, like I mentioned, to make the connection to the PEX joints. This right here is that expansion tool I was talking about. This is the half inch material with the expansion ring. And then once we expand it, all we have to do is insert the piece, hold it in place for about 30 seconds, and it starts to retain its original shape and it will be crimped down and very tight. We're gonna go ahead and do this to the rest of the fittings. All I had to do was cut the proper lengths, put all the joints together, and I tried to do most of this on the ground before I actually put everything in place because I knew that it would be a little bit easier than having to do it up on the wall. But just like that, you expand the rings, put it in place, and just position it where you want it. And it said within seconds, it's already gripping down and then we can just kind of cut them and just place it along to the locations that we want. Now I have everything in place. Everything is properly spaced out from the wall and we have all of our transitions there. And then we've ran our water lines up to the shower head and that body spray that we're gonna be having. So this shower head had some measurements on the outside to show you where to align it. And I had to be a little creative with the bracing here to actually space it out from the wall. This is a double studded wall, so I had a little bit of options to play with. But overall, I'm really happy with how it all turned out. Very clean and there was no water leaking here. I like to turn the water pressure back on before I actually hand it over, just to make sure that there's water in the lines and no leaks or tightening needed. And this right here is the finished product. This is what you can get with a little bit of hard work. Obviously I didn't do the tile work, but this thing turned out great. And I'm happy that the tile guy had no problems with my plumbing and the valve that we had set. So it was a total success. My buddy's really happy with how it all turned out. And obviously you can see it looks beautiful. So this is something that you might be able to do yourself. Take on that next job, save yourself some money, have some nice things around the house and take some pride in your work. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm really good at getting back on the comments. I like to help you guys problem solve and troubleshoot things. And um, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. I have a lot of other content like this coming out, especially as I finish that casita. I'm gonna be showing everything from the ground up, literally. So if you guys want, follow along. Thank you for watching and I appreciate everything. See you on the next build.